If everybody's ready, like, we're going to start. So, um, I guess, first of all, thanks for having us here um, tonight. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, I, uh, we're TMC Transportation. Um, we're going to talk, the um, agenda for tonight is we're going to talk a little bit about TMC Transportation. We have a massive internship program at TMC Transportation. We have an office right here in Ames on the research part. And um, we'll then go on to uh, letting everybody go on with uh, talking about what they did this summer and, and uh, uh, what they did during their internship program and show you our, our cyber dashboard. And then we're going to, at the very, very end, we're going to have a quiz. Um, so I hope everybody's paying attention to what's happening here uh, because you may be asked some questions in the presentation in the quiz. And we're going to give out some prizes for the winning team the quiz. So, um, I'm Kenny Kyle. I'm Timon. I'm Derek. I'm Tyler Felgenauer. And we are happy to be here. So, a little bit about TMC. We've been around for 50 years. We're a transportation company. Um, we are uh, um, all across the, the country. Uh, we have different offices and terminals in different locations. We started off in 1972, so we're, we celebrated 50 years. Uh, we started off in 1972 with just six trucks and an office staff of two. Today we have just over 3,000 trucks um, and you'll see some of them running around. They're all black Peterbilts. They're all very shiny and clean. Um, we look after them. So you know in your head you've obviously seen some of them before, yeah. right? So, okay. Um, we're the largest private health flatbed carrier in the nation. We are employee owned in 2013. Harold basically gave the company to the employees. So. We all own a little bit, just about that much of TMC. Uh, like I say, about 3,000 trucks today, and we're growing. Um, we have a, a large internship program that we, we talked about. Obviously, um, we, we, we um, offer quality internships to uh, students, and we recognize that if we want to keep growing, then we need to have the best talent. So we have, uh, um, this summer, we had 56 interns in our program that were spread across uh, the, the country. Um, our biggest uh, um, university is actually Iowa State University, um, and that's where most of our, our students come from, followed by um, University of South Carolina. Those are the schools. We also do um, internships for high schools, so we had uh, uh, three high school interns in our program this summer, and uh, we were um, the, the rest of them were from eight different universities. So, I'm going to hand it over to um, Timon here. Yeah, so I'm just going to introduce the team as a whole. Some of the people aren't here today, but uh, Steve Winder, he's our vice president of IT, and kind of the guy behind the whole uh, initiative and the project in the first place. Uh, I'm Timon, I'm the product manager here at TMC. Um, I've been a graduate from Iowa State from last year, but I've been with the company about three and a half years now. Um, and I kind of ran the project, made sure uh, timelines were met, and uh, the team had work to do throughout the entire thing. Um, Tyler, I'll let you go and introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm um, Tyler Fognauer. I just started this summer as a uh, software engineer intern. Um, I am actually a management information systems major and business analytics. Uh, so I got my foot in there uh, through the career fair at the business college. And uh, yeah, I was very, very pleased to get this internship. Uh, next is uh, Kenny Wendell and Hannah, Hannah Bruce. Both of them are uh, high schoolers and they were teamed up with the software engineers as we worked together with them. They were both uh, data science interns, so they helped put together um, like business intelligence and whatnot. And then uh, Nick, he also is not here. He's also a software engineering intern. And then uh, of you. Yeah, I'm Jared Brandt. Uh, I'm, I was also a software engineering intern over the summer. Uh, my major is software engineering, and I uh, landed at TMC through the Spring Career Fair. So. All right, so the purpose of the project, as you guys know, security is an ever-evolving field. Especially recently with uh, everybody going uh, work from home because of COVID, we've seen a lot of security incidents happen, especially in the last two years alone. And a lot of it comes down to training, you know. Employees sitting at home, someone sending a phishing email, they click on something, and before you know it, um, you know, the company got exposed. So our biggest thing here is to make sure we improve security um, at TMC as a whole so we can avoid something like that happening. Um, you see in the news articles, 
a lot of companies, a lot of big companies have gotten hit this year alone. So we want to make sure um, that our security posture is the best it can be. Um, so we put a pretty big initiative on growing our security team. Uh, the project they had for this year was the security dashboard. And uh, the overall dashboard is eight metrics that TMC uses to measure where our security posture is today. Um, and the main reason we have that as well is to show our uh, leadership, our executive vice presidents, uh, and not kind of what the team is working on, where we're at today, um, and kind of why that's so important. And the biggest push is SOC 2 compliance. So I'm not sure if any of you know uh, what SOC 2 is, but it's really a measure of where your security posture is today and how you handle client data. Um, as I said, with the growing amount of uh, phishing attempts or just hacks in general, uh, making sure a company is SOC 2 compliant is something a lot of big corporations are pushing for. Uh, becoming SOC 2 compliant also helps TMC grow our fleet so we can get governmental contracts uh, that are much bigger um, and then broaden our horizon just because we have that extra security and that certificate that, hey, you know, we know how to handle our security. All right, I'm going to tap in now. Uh, like I said, my name is Derek Brandt, and I'm part of the software engineering intern team over the summer. I'm going to give you a little bit of background context, and then take you through basically a day in the life, the tech stack, and then uh, I'll hand it off to Tyler, and we'll go through some of the uh, difficult, cha difficult challenges we had, lessons learned. So at the beginning of the summer, Steve Linder, who you heard about earlier, uh, sequestered us into a meeting room and presented us with his uh, grand idea for a security dashboard for TMC. And this was a mock-up uh, done by one of the UI designers. And uh, we were taken through a number of deliverables over the course, uh, about six deliverables, I'd say, um, that were supposed to last us past the summer well into uh, winter months right now. And this is the original idea that uh, the VP of IT, Steve Linder, had. So uh, if you could move to the next slide. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to walk you through basically what uh, a normal DX application looks like, so you can understand a lot of the work that we did. Um, this is a sort of uh, this is a sort of basic uh, DX, uh, which stands for Destination Excellence. It's one of TMC's uh, important mantras, and uh, you can see it all throughout TMC, uh, the business, and the company. But this is a sort of a basic UI for something that we might use at TMC. Um, this is a, a tractor trailer search uh, program. Uh, there's a number of products at the top. There's a lot of different software that can uh, be written at TMC, but this is just one example. Um, so keep this in mind, and then when we go to the next slide, um, I'll break down the general software architecture at TMC. So we use the, we use the MVC pattern, um, the model view controller pattern, and this is basically what it looks like for us. We have four high-level layers. We have the presentation layer, uh, which handles a lot of the UI. And then we have um, the persistence layer for the databases, and then the in-between domain, where the business logic happens, and then the data access. Um, and the details aren't too important, but if you go to the next slide, um, this is what ours is going to look like. So we were going to have to interface with an external system, Power BI, which is used for data analytics. Pretty popular. Uh, it's made and created by Microsoft. And then we were also going to be interfacing with uh, the cloud, AWS. And um, what AWS is going to do is automate a lot of the things that we were uh, hoping to accomplish with the security dashboard. So you saw that, that, saw that dashboard earlier. Um, those different cards with the different scores um, and metrics that are important to TMC uh, were originally being manually tracked and manually entered. And the hope was that by the end of the summer, by the end of the winter, at the very least, we would have those automated so um, higher ups and people on the security analyst team could look at the data and get a real time understanding of where we're lacking and where we're vulnerable. So if you go to the next slide for me. Um, this is the primer for the next slide. It's gonna get a lot more complex. Uh, busy, essentially, it's not that complex. Um, and this is the tech stack. These are a lot of the things that we worked with at TMC. So if you have any questions as I go through this, holler. Uh, we do most of our coding right now in C Sharp, unless a problem calls for a different language. Uh, we use your run-of-the-mill SQL uh, right here, YAML and Terraform. Uh, this is for CI/CD pipelines. Uh, this is for automated cloud uh, infrastructure provision. Um, AWS, and then Power BI, and then some of the tools we use, Git for version control, and then Azure DevOps. 
if you've taken uh, SE 319, I think that you probably use DevOps um, and uh, some of these other tools as well, um, like SQL and whatnot. Uh, so before I go on, any questions about the stack? Cool. All right. So a day in the life at TMC. Yeah, sure. What constant integration platform do you use? What sorry, can you say? What CI CD do you use, by the way? We should uh, yeah, so uh, we're using at, we're using Azure DevOps, and inside okay. of, inside of the the UI or the GUI, there's a place for the pipelines. Okay. And so you'll have um, at least the terminology they use is going to be uh, the build pipeline and then the release pipeline, as opposed to uh, continuous integration and uh, continuous development. But the YAML is the file or is the code that the pipelines are going to be looking to, um, and then we have our own on-prem servers that uh, are running a bunch of VMs and everything gets piped through that for the, uh, Sweet. the building and the releasing. <coughs> Perfect. Yeah, so this is basically uh, the day in the life that we had at TMC, which gives you a picture of the kind of technologies that we were working with and the problems we were solving. Uh, we had two repositories, one for our DX app, which you saw earlier, and then another for our automation app, which is uh, the, the work to, to be done with AWS. And these are just, it's, this is a very busy slide basically depicting um, what you would get to work with at TMC. Um, you're going to have build pipelines, you're going to have release pipelines, you're going to have your quality assurance and alpha stages before you get to production. Um, you're going to be doing things with AWS. TMC is uh, making a huge push to mature their, uh, their cloud model and trying to move more things to AWS and make sure that TMC stays competitive in uh, this, this new world that, that the entire software industry is frankly moving toward. And um, I think this slide is going to be used when we talk about the difficult challenges later. And a particular difficult challenge is, is right here, and then, um, well, two of them are gonna be related to the cloud automation uh, that we spoke <coughs> about earlier. And then just the overall complexity. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things to keep inside your head. Um, but if you're interested in the technologies, it's actually a phenomenal place to keep learning. So uh, if there's no questions, um, I'm going to pass it off to Tyler, who's going to talk about uh, the delivered product and then uh, finish and tie things up. All right. So as uh, Derek pointed out earlier with our architecture of DX, um, this is what our app came out to look like. Um, so this is actually the edit page, um, not our landing page. The landing page had a list of all of our KPI profiles. Um, so that was on the dashboard, all those tiles you can click, uh, CIS step to file benchmark, um, AWS and whatnot. And then once you click those, you go into edit, and then you can edit all of different categories tracking that KPI, such as uh, like goal value, avoid value, max min, so on and so forth. And then this tracks all the history of that uh, KPI. Next slide here. And then, uh, so this is our finished project for the dashboard. This is what uh, Hannah and uh, Kennedy came up with. Um, as you can see, it tracks all of the um, KPIs and uh, really helpful to the security team. Um, it shows weekly challenges, and uh, we came up with our own uh, goal compliance and TMC standard score. Uh, the TMC score is on a scale of one to five. So uh, we came up with that because it's just, it's easy to tell how our uh, our standard is and keep going. So on the next slide, you'll be able to see like sort of predictive an, uh, analysis. You want to go next? Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is also what Kennedy and Hannah put together. So this takes uh, past data and puts it towards a uh, future format. Um, this is really good for uh, business intelligence and just to show where the security team is heading and what direction. Um, yeah, that's that's the uh, other extent of the uh, Power BI and the data to data science team. Slide here, and I'll pass back to uh, Derek to talk about the difficult challenges. Sure. Uh, yeah, like I said earlier, uh, complexity is inherent in software. I think you could argue that pound for pound software is probably one of the most complex creations we have right now that we work with, and that means that there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of different modules, um, and and code that you're going to have to grapple with. Uh, personally, uh, you know, databases, um, APIs, uh, taking into account the security and safety of the software with testing, um, doing things in the cloud, doing DevOps and automation. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on. And so uh, that can be difficult, that can be a difficult challenge. Um, but if you're interested, then it, 
can also push you forward and make you a better engineer. The secret and, oh yeah, secrets in the security performance trade-off. Um, I threw this one in here because we learn a lot about different trade-offs um, at Iowa State. Uh, security performance, time space, and sometimes uh, these actually apply outside of the computer domain, outside of algorithms and hardware. Um, one of the difficult challenges uh, involved with uh, the APIs we had to work with is that they had a high level, they needed a high level of security when it comes to storage of the, uh, the access keys, the API secret keys. Um, and so TMC has a, a, a server called Phycotic. It's a, it's a business that provides the service of um, storing secrets uh, in the most robust way possible. And it turned out to be quite a challenge to take uh, secrets that were stored on that server and then <laughs> inject them into our program in real time during our release pipelines. So that ended up being uh, quite a difficult challenge and was a place where uh, security was actually um, at the forefront of one of the challenges we were solving uh, during our summer. And then this third one here was solved by our other teammate, Nicholas Erickson. This one is just uh, one of those problems where there's not a lot to go on and there wasn't, the, there wasn't the, any Stack Overflow articles that you could look up and, and, send and find easy solutions for. Um, at TMC, where we work, we work in a .NET environment mainly, and when we were working with AWS, a lot of AWS is using uh, their own flavor of Linux, and that proved difficult when we had to scrape this website using .NET and then using Linux at the same time, and so he ended up having to use a Docker container to package dependencies and then push that to the cloud and let that interact with the APIs, and that was just, that was just a beast of a problem in the first place. And then I'll uh, go ahead and wrap it up with our lessons learned. So at, at an internship with TMC, um, you can, I mean, obviously real world, real, <laughs> real world experience, right? Uh, so you go in, it's, it's, you go in from a classroom and uh, it's kind of a little, little scary, right? Professors, uh, even career uh, services, they kind of tell you like, oh, it's professional, professional, professional. Um, it still is professional, but you get there and it's a lot more uh, lenient with, with learning. Uh, the company helps you a lot. They pretty much teach you everything you need to know uh, to excel at your position. So it's it's definitely not as um, scary. I, I keep going back to that word, but uh, yeah, it's, it's real world experience. You're gonna you're gonna experience a lot more. You're gonna learn a lot differently than you would just straight out of a classroom. And then uh, secondly, you're going to uh, it's combination of knowledge as well. So coming from my background as an MIS major and business analytics major. I was thrown on a team of two other software engineers, so it was definitely different for, uh, we all had different backgrounds, and that's what kind of made our team special, and we excelled better that way as well. I had more database background and more background with business intelligence and data analysis, and that kind of helped us work with the uh, two girls on the data science team, and they, they had more of a background in software, so it definitely helped us uh, put together a really good team, and uh, hopefully, a future internship for you guys or future positions, you'll also realize that as well. And then, uh, yeah, expect the unexpected. So uh, this project, this internship was really uh, loose. It had a good structure, but it was uh, very up to us on our team. And uh, we had our own kind of like learning curves and learning path. So we had a lot of problems and there wasn't a lot of people to go to with these problems because it was just thrown to us. And uh, so we had to learn on our own and uh, fight, over these, fight over these problems together. and. Uh, yeah, you just expect whatever is gonna go wrong will go wrong. So um, yeah, it was just, it kind of loops right back into uh, number two there. So the more people you have with bigger backgrounds, more of a knowledge pool, the more you can get through all these problems that unexpectedly happen. So that concludes our uh, presentation here. Does anybody have any uh, questions? Um, what were your experiences? Would you say like, like you grow the most? What was most beneficial? Mm. The, the senior developers were really, really helpful. And you could go to them with questions all the time. And there was never, you know, there was never any uh, negative feedback, negative emotions. Um, so I could always ask questions. Uh, we were given a lot of freedom, but we also respected that. Uh, TMC has a, at least with the developers um, in the Ames office, um, there's a, a bit of a laid back culture but there's also the expectation that you know, you're gonna pull through and you're gonna deliver. 
And so I felt that there was a good balance of that. And I think my third point that helped me grow the most, um, we had a great team this summer. And so uh, we just, we were all, we were constantly being collaborative, constantly being social. And I think software uh, is a lot more fun. And when that, when you're talking about it and you're, you're doing the design um, in your team and you're talking about trade-offs, uh, there's a lot of times where I would say something over the summer and I say, oh, we should do it this way. And Tyler would come and he'd make his point and then I'd be persuaded and because he actually made a better point and we ended up delivering a, a better product in a shorter time frame. Like I said, this was supposed to be well into the winter months, but we, we finished it in about four and a half. So we were ahead of schedule and I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the culture, the senior devs, and then having a good team that was really collaborative. Yeah? Uh, what majors do you hire? What majors does teams can hire? Yeah. <laughs> well, I can try to answer that as best as I can. <laughs> it's really across the board, so um, I'm an MIS major as well, so MIS for sure. Um, and then software engineers, a lot of that, and then anything with data. Um, we're also, like I said, now pushing our security quite a bit, so uh, next year especially, uh, we'll probably have some pretty, I would say, good security-based uh, internships, as well as hiring people directly for that role. Um, it's a kind of a, a new-ish department uh, internally. We've always had security, but a lot of it's been handled third party, so now that we're really trying to build this thing up, uh, we'll definitely be looking to hire in that space uh, quite a bit. So I would say anything really IT-related, and then logistics as well. So uh, I know it's completely separate from you guys, but uh, logistics as well. So if you're in um, freight, want to learn how to move freight, then I'm on over. Yeah, we, we hire a lot of uh, supply chain, um, also marketing and sales. Um, obviously, nothing to do with any of you guys in here, but it's uh, um, probably we hire more um, supply chain majors than, than uh, any anybody else, and that's from. Uh, a variety of uh, universities, but um, you know, as far as you guys are concerned, uh, just what Damon was talking about there. And obviously, um, cybersecurity is huge, right, for any any company. So, you guys are in a great major here. So. Uh, what are some challenges that your type of organization faces doing in like the transportation sector? So, what type of technology issues do you run into that might be experiencing? Well, there is, there is a certain degree of overlap because um, there's a lot of commonality across software problems. I do know that one of the, one of the senior developers um, worked on a really interesting uh, application for uh, tracking truck drivers and um, delivering breadcrumb, breadcrumb data in real time to logistic people inside the company. I don't know how many, uh, how many other uh, places where if you're just doing SaaS or you're just doing front end or back end where you're gonna um, accomplish something that's, that's real time and being used inside the company um, as an internal product like that. So I think TMC has a lot of examples where uh, you're building out software to make the company better um, on the inside, which in effect grows and then the cycle repeats itself um, as compared to uh, some other domains where you might be uh, creating software and then selling it to, to a third party um, or, or doing some sort of SaaS operation like that. Do you guys want to talk about next steps in your project that's happening here? Sure, yeah. So uh, you saw the UI earlier. It's not going to win any awards for <laughs> the Mona, um, being a Mona Lisa or anything like that, <coughs> which is actually what TMC is working on right now. Um, a lot of the UI is getting a complete overhaul, um, which means that uh, we're using new technology, modern technology, modern web frameworks, Angular in particular, uh, to deliver a, a new UI, um, you know, a, a new 21st century UI. So that's one of the big things we're working on is giving this a facelift and then combining it. You saw the dashboard earlier. I think it is actually beautiful. Um, but bringing this up to par with uh, the, the pow what Power BI can provide um, is one of the main things that we're transitioning to right now. And this is all like internal as well. So as you know, most companies, they're internal. They don't really focus on UI too much since it's not facing the customer. 
Um, or everything that faces the customer that's forward facing like that is obviously more up to par and, and more modern today. So <laughs> we kind of want to better our employees internally as well and bring that up to speed. So um, while this may not look the prettiest, it still works pretty well. So I think other than that, yeah, other than that, TMC's making a huge push toward the cloud, toward AWS. Um, that's our cloud provider of choice, moving a, a lot of things um, off of the on-prem servers and onto cloud. Um, and we're working with, not only internally, but with, uh, with other companies to really push ourselves and make sure that we are in the cloud as well, because that's where things are. And it goes back to that, you know, cloud security is a big thing we're pushing for next year. Uh, so while we do have internal security that works mainly on-prem, uh, they've been going through and getting training and certificates to work in multi-cloud environments because while we are primarily AWS, we do still have some stuff in Azure. Um, and we want to make sure our security guys are kind of up to speed and know what's going on. Uh, same with our enterprise architecture. So that's moving to a cloud-based enterprise architecture as well. Um, and that's a big push here in the next 18 months to have basically the entire company on cloud and move from it, perhaps, so. I was going to ask why AWS over Azure, because I know uh, the <coughs> video to Azure is way easier. That is more technical, which I'm not sure why. Um, I think we've had a really long-standing contract with AWS, and, and we've been working with them with a, for a really long time. Um, and it came down to, we're not going to have a primary. Like primary will be AWS, but at the end of the day, we'll still be a multi-cloud company. Um, why they chose them over the other, I mean, there could be a, a slew of reasons. And one of the biggest ones companies choose as well is obviously pricing. You know, once you start getting to that uh, high number range, um, the biggest thing that's important is what's the dollar cost to do that. So uh, it's not cloud, but at least for their decision to go with Angular, uh, I know that. When TMC is going to make a really big position, or going to take a really big position in some other uh, technology, um, they're pretty much always creating multiple, uh, usually four or five or six proof of concepts with uh, across technologies. So the decision to go with Angular was weighed against the decision to go with React, was weighed against Vue, was, was weighed against some of these other frameworks that are available for the front end. And so you can you can be assured that there was uh, a lot of discussion uh, before making the decision to go. Um, primarily with AWS, although Tamam did say that you know, we are multi-cloud. So it's going to be a traditional like uh, Angular ASP.NET application. Right now, yeah, we're working <coughs> with Angular and also uh, a company called Prime NG. Um, they provide a lot of uh, boilerplate boilerplate code. Okay. Um, so I I think as long as our servers are still using .NET, um, then it will be ASP.NET Angular. Um, I can't talk for sure on it quite yet because it's still in motion, um, but I think so, yeah. yeah. Any uh, other questions about either which side of or the internship program in general? Or TMC. Yeah. Okay. Suggestions on when we should start applying for internships if we're interested? Today. <laughs> Depends. Um, we really put, I guess Jack is kind of in charge in our Ames office, uh, the internship program up here. I believe he's usually at all the career fairs that you, that you guys do up here. I would say for the summer, probably January, February next year, I think we'll have some stuff open up. Um, I don't know if we have anything on the website today officially for internships. I think it's all. Uh, full time, but uh, I would say definitely beginning of next year, around that first quarter time frame. TMC also does a really good job of just planting roots in the, in the community. Most of the developer, a lot of a lot of developers um, are Iowa State graduates who are in the Ames office. Um, so if every if, single developer, every every, every <laughs> single one, okay, yeah, yeah. was an intern from mm -hmm. Iowa State. So the conversion is one hundred percent. So. Uh, and probably about happen. half the people in Des Moines yeah. are also from Iowa State and also interns. So, well, what was your favorite thing you learned from your internship? AWS Lambda, absolutely, <laughs> it, absolutely. I had been wanting to do stuff with AWS for a while. I had dipped my toes, so to speak. Um, but uh, getting actual experience with serverless functions, and then um, AWS Lambda is is the 
the thing that spins up in real time and calls all these different APIs. If you want to, if you could go back to uh, uh, the security dashboard. To the dashboard? Yeah. That one? Yeah. So our uh, AWS Lambda um, are, are these are these functions running on a, on a Linux, uh, Amazon Linux environment that spin up in real time. Um, every eight hours is how is how often we have, and they call all these different APIs. So they're calling the AWS. Um, Security Hub API, and they're calling uh, a Microsoft Graph API, a BitSight API, and they're getting these scores back and then storing them into our database, and that's how a lot of this is working behind the scenes. Uh, but actually getting the experience and being able to figure out how things are working end to end with AWS was uh, something that was probably the thing I enjoyed most. Sure. Do you guys hire freshmen or is it kind of just we hire high schoolers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not freshman high schoolers, but probably yeah. seniors. Yeah, yeah so uh, uh, Nicholas Erickson uh, was not a freshman, but he was a sophomore. Um, and he, he, was very, he was very talented. And more importantly than that, he could really learn. And so I, I think that if you can demonstrate some aptitude and potentially be a good fit, that you will learn at TMC. They will bring you on and teach you. Yeah, you should probably have something related to uh, web development on there. Um, I I know that uh, one of the things that Nick actually had that was really influential is he uh, participated and did really well in a hackathon, and and so it, I think demonstration that you you're, you're doing well in school and that you've done some sort of uh, front end or back end or uh, have interest outside of uh, the work, and then can also talk during the, the uh, have conversational ability. Um, I think there's a pretty big stack of uh, applications uh, for the summer internship, but ultimately, um, as one of the other developers who was on the, uh, the hiring team put it, uh, most of the people who got passed on the interviews were people who had good conversational ability. Yeah, definitely, I would go off of that. Uh, I didn't have too much, as much as Derek, and. Nick on their resumes for like software, but uh, when I was talking to Colin, one of our full-time uh, employees that we work with constantly, uh, I just t told him all my interests and what I was passionate about uh, and, and learning and web development and whatnot, and that really sparked a conversation between us. We talked for 30 minutes on software, so it really just you just really have to show your passion, and your confidence for uh, what you want to do. We are. Uh, unless anybody's got any more questions, right? We've got about 15 minutes left, so we're going to have a quiz um, and we're going to give out prizes to the winning team. And I don't know how many people we've got in here, but we got we want to divide everybody into nine teams. So we got about 30 people, so... Yeah, 30 even. 30 even. Yeah. We only have nine teams, but we can make 10 teams if you want. So let's make 10 teams. So can you kind of go together and write 10 teams? We've got, we've only got 19 names, so. though. Right. Right. Yeah, right. oh, right. oh, yeah. oh, 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 you You guys are east of the equator. The team, well, only one person from each team open up Kahoot app on your phone. Oh, yeah. All right? Who's the best? 
It's an app called Kahoot. Uh, no, you're not allowed to use the laptop. In fact, you, you need to shut your laptops because there's not nobody allowed to Google stuff around here. Or here so. I've just still send in a Kahoot for uh, Oh, I never looked at it. You should send in a thing for. I'll make it. I'll make it silly. We're supposed to make a good boot about ourselves. It can be anything. It can be anything. I'm just gonna make a nice silly boot because. Are you going to that? You should. Can you go to the last one? Oh, okay. Just to get focused. Okay. Question. But our next event we're working on is called Cookie Clash. We need to smash for the event and we're going to play like a crumble cookie box uh, as the grand prize. And then we're also going to have like cookies. We're gonna, well, we're going to have cookies that are given away also. I know. It's now. There's no cookie. All right, so one person from each team. Put the pin number in and put your team put the name of your team in as your name, not your own name, okay? So game of drones, you probably won't be able to get the whole team name in, but put in what you can. Everybody, every see their team name up there. <laughs> all right, you guys all right, right? So no cheating, no looking at laptops. All right, these are some of the questions are just regular 20 second questions, but some of the questions are really fast and they're for double points. So there's a couple of true or falses in there. Basically, they're about stuff that's out of your curriculum. They're about questions about cybersecurity, questions about questions about what you heard tonight. So, all right, you ready? We're gonna start. Here we go. All right, the, the key word there was hardware, all right? And it looks like the humble champions are in the lead. Where's the humble champions? Here we go, humble champions are in the lead. Closely followed by the desert lobsters and then east of the equator. All right, next question. True or false? And it's for double points. We talked about this earlier on. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh come on. Don't let us have. I'm better. I am better. We're in seventh. And it looks like east of the equator. Is that you guys? Yeah. East of the equator is in the lead. Followed by the humble champions. Where's the uh, fire breathing rubber duckies? Where are they? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, question number three from 15. <laughs> All right, CIA there was the key word. Oh, humble champions are back. We got East of the Equator in second, the fire breathing rubber duckies in third, not fast, just furious in fourth, and the scrambled legs in fifth place. 
Question number four. Cybersecurity protection of an organization is the responsibility of who? Mm. East the equator, back in the lead. All right. Question number five. We're a third of the way through. I think we might see a change in the leaderboard here, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, oh, the fire, where's the fire breathing rubber duckies? All right. Not fast is furious in, in second place and East Equator in third. Game of Drones on the board now. All right, question number six. Credited for shortening World War II by the invention of a machine to break the enigma code a predecessor of the computer. Who was this person? If you you tried to gaslight like All right, it was uh, Alan Turing and, and uh, no change there in the board. True or false? It's never snowed on Christmas Day on the Iowa State campus. That's false. That's too specific. <laughs> All right, no change again, the leaderboard. All right, this is uh, first course in cybersecurity offered at ISU was what year? You guys got that one right? All right, let's see. Oh. All right. Question number nine. Iowa State University is the largest university in Iowa. I wonder if we're going to see a change in the leaderboard here. Where's the scrambled legs team over here? All right, question number 10. I know. All right. You can thank Dr. Doug Jacobson for that question. <laughs> All right. Desert Lobsters has the highest answer streak of three. Humble Champions moved up, but it's still the Friar Breathing Rubber Duckies in the lead. Not Fast, Just Furious second. East of the Queer third. Question number 11. Question number 12. This is the name of a town in which country? Questions here, so you better be quick. Cybersecurity Engineering Program was recently accredited by who? 
Let's go. Where's the fire breathing rubber duck? Still in the lead. Where's not fast, but just furious? Oh, close now, right? Okay. East of the equator is over here. All right. We got. Question number 14. Let's go. Double points. It's a big chance. Who was listening earlier on? All right. I don't know. I don't know if the fire breathing rubber duckies can get caught here. Yeah, I suppose they can. Question. question 15, last question, oh. double points. If you want to come up here, we're going to give you prizes, but East of the Equator gets first choice since they were first. And then can I get the, the team cards back as well, please?